Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Captain Bill Haynes with New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety. With me today is the Office of Highway Safety team. Our agenda for today is to try to familiarize you with the procedures we utilize to pick our partners this year, as well as to identify those that will be participating in mobilizations. As you can see on the screen now, this is our agenda for today. We apologize for any miscues during this presentation as we're, we're doing our best to do this remotely so everybody has an opportunity to understand, like in past years, how we're doing business. Our team members that are with us today are John Clegg, our program manager, Linda Epstein, who is our accountant in the office, Jennifer Tramp, who's the public information officer, Luann Spikers, who's our field representative, Kimberly Roberts, one of our field representatives, Jeffrey Landy, who is our law enforcement liaison, who does our state contracts, contracts, excuse me, Paul Rosario, our law enforcement liaison, who's currently working special projects for the office, and Roger Bochamp, who's a field representative law enforcement liaison who works with the field representatives in our office currently. The problem identification process used by the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety includes analysis of traffic safety data supplied by the New Hampshire Division of Motor Vehicles and vehicle miles traveled by community supplied by the Bureau of Planning and Community Assistance at the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. The data analysis that is conducted is utilized to determine eligibility the augmentation funding in support of traffic safety to local law enforcement. This data-driven approach is to ensure that Office of Highway Safety meets NHTSA standards and is also at the forefront of combating the problems that we see in our roadways. A couple key things to point out here. As noted, this is the augmentation funding, which means that it's imperative that local agencies do this on a routine basis and focus on traffic safety in order for you to be eligible for this type of funding by NHTSA standards. I also want to point out this is a data-driven approach, and as we've moved forward in the last couple of years, we've made it a focus of our efforts to ensure that we only uh, employ those partners who provide a resource that enables us to reduce crashes and fatalities, as well as serious bodily injuries on our highway that's data-supported, as required by NHTSA. The Office of Highway Safety receives all crash data for staff review by the New Hampshire Department of Safety Business Systems Analyst. The statistics analyzed are historical data currently collected in concurrence with the federal physical year. For purpose of definition, let's define the federal physical year. The current federal physical year runs from October 1 to 30 September of 2021. The Office of Highway Safety is currently utilizing three federal physical years of data to determine the eligibility. In federal physical year 2022, we will move that to be four years of collected data and subsequently in federal physical years 2023 will be utilizing five years. Why five years? Well, five years is the average number of years that we utilize in our highway safety plan, as well as our highway safety improvement plan. We've worked very hard over the last few years with the DMV and others to get the data we need in order to go to a five-year estimate and give you an average number of fatality with serious fall injury crashes combined with vehicle miles traveled to enable the, our ability to predict where those crashes would occur in the future. Some of the items that we utilize for the allocation formula includes the following. I won't bore you with reading all of this slide, but if you note it's total crashes, it's imperative that you submit your crashes in a timely manner. It's even more imperative that you endeavor to achieve the ability to report these electronically so we have real-time response in the future to what's going on in our roadways. We use average fatalities. Again, it's an average number. This year is over average of three years, and again, following this year will be an average of four, and then ultimately will be an average of five years. Total serious bodily injury. We use that total for serious bodily crashes and injuries in order to help us determine where we may need to find some augmentation funding in order to support communities in and around those communities who cannot participate. And on the far right, you'll see a number of other data points that we utilize to help us make our decisions. Eligibility of funding in support of local law enforcement partners is determined utilizing a statistically supported points based system. Once the eligible points have been determined, the commander and program manager of the Office of Highway Safety, along with the accountant, determine the number of departments that can be funded to allow the most effective distribution of funds. The departments will be ranked from highest to lowest. To determine the amount of money to budget for each project area, speed, distracted driving, and impaired driving, a formula is created to give each department the corresponding percentage of available money in each project area. The formula is put into each cell for all towns and cities to determine the amount of each category that they could get. Before we move on, I'd like to get the opportunity for Luann to reach out and talk to you a little bit about how the point system was developed 
and more importantly, how the point system is spread out. Go ahead. Thank you, Captain Haynes. In order to determine the towns that would get funded, we created a scoring matrix. And the data categories we used were vehicle miles traveled, a three-year average of fatalities, percent of serious bodily total injuries, and the percent of serious bodily crashes. In each of those categories, a town could earn three, five, or seven points. And I'll give you an example using the three-year average for fatalities. So if your town had a three-year average of one to two fatalities, you received three points. If your town had a three-year average of three to four fatalities, you received five points. And if your town had a three-year average of five or higher fatalities, you received seven points. Once we scored the remaining categories, being vehicle miles traveled, percent of serious bodily total injuries, and percent of serious bodily crashes, we added up all of the points. The most a town could receive was 28 points, which would mean they scored seven points in each of the four categories. And the least points a town could receive would be zero points. We then sorted the towns by the highest to the lowest point, points. And then at this point, Captain Haynes worked with our accountant to determine how much money in each of the project areas that we were funding. Again, the project areas are speed, DUI, distracted driving. And we determined based on the points how many, how many towns we would be able to fund. Once we determined how many points a town needed to get into the invite list, we then needed to determine how much money they were going to get in each of the project areas. So what we did in this case is, as an example, uh, to explain how we determined the amount of money a town could be awarded, let's assume that we gave $100,000 in each of the project areas, again, speed, DUI, and distracted driving. So let's say that town A has 2% of the crashes are speed related, 4% of their crashes are DUI related, and 0% of their crashes are, they have no distracted driving crashes. So on a $100,000 uh, fund, if they were getting, if they had 2% of the speed crashes, they would get $2,000 in a speed award. They had 4% of the crashes were DUI crashes, so they would get $4,000 in a DUI award. And again, because they didn't have any distracted driving crashes, they would get nothing in the distracted driving. The mobilizations were done slightly differently. Um, again, Captain Haynes and our accountant determined how much money they wanted to spend on the mobilizations. Uh, and we structured this slightly different, uh, differently this year because we wanted to give the towns more hours to spend during the mobilization period, which generally lasts about two weeks for each mobilization. So this year we just awarded $850 for each of the four mobilizations. Uh, and we, in essence, just went down the spreadsheet, uh, again, sorted by towns with the most points to the least points until the money was gone. Uh, and the amounts that we picked, uh, we used an average hourly rate of $65 an hour, which would give towns approximately 13 hours in each of those four mobilizations. Um, and so as you can assume, if you have an officer doing the patrol that makes more than $65 an hour, you're going to get uh, slightly less than 13 hours in that mobilization period. On the flip side, if you use an officer that makes less than $65 an hour, you're going to get more than 13 hours uh, of patrol time. And that was how the funding and the funding amounts were determined. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that very much. So here's an example of uh, label as any town. I know this is difficult to read, but it gives you a clear, clear example of when it's on a larger screen of, of how those percentages were broken down and how that money was awarded. And if you look for each category, there was a percent given and in the far right is the total number of dollars that were awarded to each one of the PDs based on the higher order. And as Lynn had said, as we went down and we ran out of money, we had to stop. And that took care of round one funding. 
So here's the typical officer highway safety grant life cycle. I won't bore you with the details other than the fact to say, if you're curious as to how we do business, if you follow this, much like the Uber loop that you see for uh, use of force in local law enforcement and state police, you'll see that there's a higher approach to how we do business and what happens after we do the actual awards. This is just here for your edification to help you understand how things work. And this is routine year after year. It's based seasonally for the most part. We can pretty much predict uh, where we're going and how fast we're getting there. Two types of products that were funded, as Lynn spoke about, is, is the ones that include STEP, which is what we used to refer to it as, which include speed, impaired driving, distracted driving. And again, we talked a little bit about the five national localizations, the two drive sober, get pulled over, one you text, you drive, you drive, you text, you pay, and one click of the ticket, commonly known as the join the answer click. These are the mobilizations that were awarded. Now, some departments who awarded money um, who were eligible for what we used to refer to as STEP, we mandatorily have to participate in mobilizations. Any department who chose not to participate in mobilizations lost the funding that they would have been eligible for, and that would have moved forward to round two. So the department awarded one or more of the year long projects. You are required and you shall participate in national mobilizations. Um, and therefore you automatically awarded those hours that we had spoke about previously. Once we, we fulfilled those at mobilizations, we moved forward to the bottom of the list and started rewarding mobilization space strategically on those towns and cities where we may have to augment as a result of a town or city withdrawing from step and we wanna make sure we have some type of visibility there and or as you fell point based on the system itself. We are this year transitioning from operation safe commute to an evidence-based high visibility enforcement strategy as we already spoke about. Operation safe commute was not as effective using the local towns and municipalities based on our roadways. We are maintaining that in state police for our highways and, and things of that nature, ID 9, 93, uh, somewhat of 16, some very strategically located areas. So for the local law enforcement, the benefit of this is, is that it maximizes your ability to become more participative in these national mobilizations. The only requirement in the scope of work is that on that day of enforcement, the very first day for that week or whatever campaign it is, you are required to do a minimum of one four hour detail. The rest of that mobilization period, be it a week, seven days, or 10 days, you're, you're authorized to use your money the way you see fit to, that meets the needs of your community to maximize those mobilizations based on your, your particular strategic plan for your particular PD. It does allow for more flexibility for our partners to effectively address those problem areas in their towns and cities, and we're hoping that moving forward, this will benefit you. The number of partners notified for mobilization will be based on the mobilization budget. As we explained, we start with 100,000, for example, and we move down until we ran out of money. Once we ran out of money, this was round one. It's important for me to share with you now that what we did this year, like we spoke about in previous years, and especially last year, is we stopped writing or trying to cash a check for something we had no money for. So what does that mean? This year, we had roughly $4 million that we expect to receive from its in various types of resource grants to allow this funding. We started this by taking the average amount of monies that we historically funded over the years, broke that down and went into the system to where we ran out of that $4 million and allocated only those dollars that we know or participate will be awarded this year. Unlike many years in the past, we had an abundance of money and we could write a check for something that we not necessarily had that we called rollover money. This year, we have chosen not to do that. And as a result, if, if and when we receive any additional dollars or rollover money, as we call it before to it, we'll be taking another look at it through round three to determine where we can place money strategically to offset crashes and, and fatalities that we're forward. So for those of you on this call who may not have gotten mobilizations and or any of the what we used to refer to as step funding, please be patient. In the event that you reach those point matrices, and please feel free to call any of the field representatives if you have any questions, we will be re-awarding money starting sometime in January. Here's what we know. We know that speed has become a very big problem in the state of New Hampshire as well as nationally. As a result, we also know that some of the radars and razors that you have are antiquated. Our plan in the Office of Highway Safety is to take a large chunk of that 402 money, which we typically fund our local law enforcement with, and allocate that to equipment such as new lasers and new radar systems to help us move forward in, in combat some of these speed issues. So some of that money that we realize as rollover, and we fully expect to have a large chunk of rollover based on the COVID, um, we're going to allocate to equipment and allow you to upgrade your radar systems and so forth.
once these grant applications are developed, which we're in the process of doing now, we're going to send these out. We've already had initial communication with you right via our, our current actual application process and ask whether you could participate. Please look forward in the very near future to see your contracts coming out. One of the things holding up at this point is we don't have that money awarded yet in NHTSA. However, we will begin within the next week or two from the date of this call to start reaching out strategically to get funding out there for the upcoming holidays. We apologize up front for those we may not get a grant application to. It's not because we don't want you to participate. It's simply because the funding hasn't been awarded yet. And we need to make sure that we move forward very soon. Points of contact for grant agreements, specific questions on these are listed here on this slide. Please feel free to contact anybody in, on this slide. And for any questions you may have, they're all fully capable of answering any of your questions and helping you make some decisions in the future. Our media platforms are listed above. We encourage each and every one of you to participate actively in our media platforms and to follow us on any one of these platforms. And more importantly, we ask that each one of you contribute yourselves from your local municipalities to help us maximize the availability of these platforms. Obviously, the most encouraging thought here is our partnerships save lives. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, and without you, we're not going to be able to continue to reduce crashes. To date, we're right even with the number of fatalities that we had last year. We still have two very large holidays coming forward in November. And again, we have the Christmas holidays in September, or excuse me, December. We're hoping very soon, it's unfortunate we start celebrating Christmas in September, but it is in December. But we hope very near future we'll get these grant applications out to you. And we look forward to communicating with many of you sometime in January to talk a little bit about whatever role of the money, equipment money we may have rolling forward. I also want to encourage everybody to take full advantage of getting connectivity through VPN and to get your electronic crash reports in as soon as you can and you're capable of doing so. And we have to have equipment money dedicated to the tune of $150,000 this year to enable to get you online electronically. The faster we get each and every one of you online electronically, the more responsible we'll be able to be to crashes and the more able we'll be able to distribute money in a more strategic manner. I'd like to open this session up now to any of our highway safety members on the team today to ask any particular questions or fill in anything that I may have missed. I think it's critical that we ensure that we cover everybody's issues and I'll go back to the previous slide. Any questions from anybody from the Office of Highway Safety, anything that I've missed that you'd like to share? Hi, Bill, this is Jen, um, Captain Haynes, excuse me. I just wanted to um, make a correction. It's not applications, it's grant agreements. I just wanted to uh, clarify that. Absolutely. The grant applications went up previously, Jen. Thank you very much. And it is the grant agreement that will be coming out shortly, strategically initially. Any other questions or comments for the group? Seeing none and hearing none, thank you very much for your time today. I hope this is beneficial to all of you. If you, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to us. Although we're all operating virtually, um, at this point in time, I'm always available at the Emergency Operations Center on a day-to-day -day basis for any questions you may have. And more importantly, every one of the members of the Highway Safety are out there working very hard via in the office or remotely to, to meet your needs and to move forward with the, trying to reduce crashes, save lives, and actually save injuries. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.